folk, Dr. Greg Gibbons here, pastor of Ambassador Bible Church United Kingdom, and we continue in our daily devotional as we move through a little devotional booklet I wrote five years ago, Spiritual Warfare, A Guide to Spiritual Fitness for the Battle, a 31-day devotional. And uh, we're on day 27, so we're going to jump right in. Ephesians 6 verse 14 says, Stand firm, therefore, having girded your loins with truth. The above verse reminds us that we have to put on truth as we prepare for battle. A soldier in Bible times used to wear a strong leather belt into which he tucked the loose flowing edges of his robe or tunic so that he did not trip over the loose ends. How often don't we trip over loose ends, those little half-truths that have become acceptable even in the church of Jesus Christ? A good soldier needs to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. We live in a world which believes in relative truth. Truth that changes according to the circumstances or how we feel or how we perceive things. And you know, I've seen that so often. People say, well, that's only your opinion. At the end of the day, it's God's word and God's word speaks for itself. As I carry on, it says, the Bible teaches absolute truth. Truth that remains constant regardless, so very carefully, regardless of the circumstances, how we feel or how we perceive things. Too many today are trying to mold both Jesus and the truth to their own image. This makes life easy for them and is, of course, very politically correct. But the reality is that Jesus and the Bible is absolute truth. We as Christian soldiers need to stand on that, accept it and apply God's word to every area of our lives and walk with God. There are no gray areas with God, only black and white, hot or cold. And I'd like to read from Revelation 3 verses 14 to 16. The Amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God says this, I know your deeds that you are neither hot, cold nor hot, I would that you were cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. Lord, help me to walk in truth. And we are living in a world where that relative truth pervades everywhere. And people say, well, there is not an absolute truth. It depends how you feel, what your perception is, what your circumstances are, etc., etc., and the church has been sucked into that, that whole philosophy where they've taken the absolute truth of the Word of God and they've twisted it, manipulated it, and in some places removed huge chunks of it in order to fit into their philosophy or their particular frame of reference or their political leanings at that moment in time. Case in point is marriage. God is very clear. He says marriage is between a man and a woman. That's an absolute truth. Even the Church of Jesus Christ has compromised on that in many, many areas. And we've allowed all sorts of marriages to take place. But that's not the marriage that God put in place. It's not marriage according to God's Word. God said you know, He created them man and woman. That's another area where absolute truth has been manipulated. And we now have all these, well, I've lost count of the, the, the different sort of uh, number of uh, genders, etc., etc. And at the end of the day, God's word is absolute. And as born-again believers, we need to stand on God's word and realize that God means what he says. That's his absolute truth. He doesn't change it just because we're in the 21st century. He doesn't twist it around. God's word is absolute. And my cry to Christians today is that as individuals, we need to recover God's absolute truth found in his infallible word. Because if we don't, if we look to pastors, ministers, bishops, popes, whatever religious office you want to mention, if we look at them to interpret God's word to us, then we're going to run into problems. Because at the end of the day, 
those people will stand up in great authority and you just have to turn on your radio or TV and almost every day there will be somebody who will be this or that or they've got some very officious title. And basically what they're doing is taking God's word and dumbing it down or twisting it and saying, you know, in my opinion, this has changed now and this is what's relevant. Really? God's word is God's word. There's no gray area. It's black and white, hot or cold. And God warns us in Revelation, there was a church that was doing just that. He says, you're either hot for me or you're cold. So because you're lukewarm, because you're trying to sort of have feet in both camps and keep everybody politically happy and politically correct, and that I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. You see, you're either all in for God or you're all in for the world. You can't have a foot in both camps. The Lord said, He who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. And there's many other verses that are along similar lines. You see, Jesus calls for absolute commitment and absolute trust and belief in his word. And the church of Jesus Christ, the real church of Jesus Christ, is getting smaller and smaller for people who still hold to the absolute truth. As a pastor, I've been horrified when I hear of cases of churches where young people are living together. And not only living together, but they're leading worship teams and they're leading worship on Sundays. And totally contrary to what the Word of God says. People have been put into positions in the church that completely ignore the biblical guidelines and standards. That's what happens when we abandon the absolute truth of God's word. Chaos and compromise come in. And that's exactly what the devil wants. The devil has not, is not changing the church from the outside. He's changing it from the inside. And he's infiltrated his people into every strata of the church. And he's using them to compromise and when that begins to happen, people have abandoned the absolute truth of God. And folk, I really want to encourage you today. You need to get into God's word. And as, as I said previously, when I was speaking about mentorship, you need to get solid Bible materials that are, that are solid. And if you don't know where to do that or how to get that, then just send us a message. We'll help you with that. I found a couple of guys through the years that are rock solid. And I stick with, it, with those. And we use a number of their programs in our church. Because they're rock solid. Solid, absolute men of God who stick to the word. And that's what I really want to challenge you with and encourage you. Let me tell you what. And this is by way of encouragement. If you're sticking to God's word. You won't be popular. You won't have people flocking around. Because the message you bring jars with the, with the cultures that we live in. And even within the so-called church family, you won't win many friends. I have a friend who's passionate about challenging churches on abortion. God's given him such a burden for it. And that's a good burden. And he writes th to thousands of churches asking them to please stand up against abortion. Stand up against the, the slaughter, because that's what it is. Against the slaughter of innocent babies in the womb. So many churches write back and say, this is a controversial issue that we leave to the opinions of the people. And they're not prepared to take a stand. Some of them actively support abortion. And when you look at that, that's absolutely contrary to the word of God. But you see, that's become the, the, the accepted norm. Because the vast majority are compromising. And those, the minority, which stand absolute on God's word, 
they are branded as religious fanatics, religious fundamentalists. Yes, they are fundamentalists. They fundamentally believe in the absolute truth of God. They fundamentally believe in the inerrant word of God. They fundamentally believe that you must be born again. They fundamentally believe the main teachings that come out of the word of God. So yes, they are fundamentalists. And I remember years and years ago in the pastorate, a lady came up to me and I'd been involved in a school meeting and they were about to put on a play which was quite frankly blasphemous. Oh, this is grade seven kids. And I stood against them as the minister. The other minister who was on the board was quite happy for them to go ahead. He, he was a religious politician in the church keeping everybody happy and just changing theology to suit as it needed to be. And she came up to me and she said, you radical. I said, absolutely I'm radical. I'm radical for Jesus Christ. I'm radically sold out to the truth. I'm radically sold out to the Bible. And I said, if we apply what God's word says to our lives, then we have stability in our lives. She said, well, you're just a radical. Three years later, her life just blew up. Her marriage blew up. Her husband was having affairs and all sorts of things. And, and I bumped into her a couple of years later. She turned to me and she said, you know what? I realize now that if you're really going to live a Christian life, you have to be radical. I said to her, absolutely. The normal Christian life is radical. And Richard Booker put out a book called Extreme Christianity. I think that was the name, it might be slightly off, but I think it was, it was to deal with extreme Christianity, which is really normal Christianity. But it's judged extreme by the religious world of our day because of the degree of compromise. If you're going to stand against the devil, you need to know the Word of God. You need to believe the Word of God. And you need to believe in the absolute truth of the Word of God. Because the devil will come along and whisper, as we said previously, did God really say and you can turn in saying, yes, he did, and I believe it, because it's the absolute word of God. Then you will not fall to his tricks and ploys and attacks. Let's pray. Father God, I just praise and thank you that we as your people today can come and stand firm on the absolute truth of the word of God. Lord, we're not perfect, none of us are. But we just come in humility before you, we ask, Lord, that you would wash us in your blood, that you would keep us close to you, and that, Lord, we would stand on the absolute truth. And, Lord, I just pray today that those who hold responsibility for teaching the Word of God would have an encounter with you and return back to the Word again. Lord, such a large portion of what is called the church have abandoned your Word and the absolute truth of your Word for their own opinions and for twisting the word in order to fit into the cultural norms of our day and to be politically correct. Lord, you were never politically correct. That's why they nailed you to the cross. And Lord, I just pray that we would see a revival as men and women recover the word of God. In the Old Testament, when they found the word again, when rebuilding the temple, there was revival. Whenever your word is preached and taught like it should be, there is revival and men and women come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. The Lord has become so difficult today to continue to stand as light and salt because so many who have the name over the door have abandoned your word and have diluted it to the point where it's not even recognizable anymore. But Lord, I just pray you'd help us to stand firm and strong for the truth of the Word of God. Thank you, King Jesus. Amen. Bless you. Have a good day, and we'll see you tomorrow.